night. Straight ahead, a scary sight in Riverside as emergency responders rush to save a man who was stuck on a cell tower. Plus, is the cost of groceries finally going down? And a top Al-Qaeda leader has been killed in a counterterrorism operation. News 4 at 10 starts now. From KTIV, Siouxland's News Channel, this is News 4 at 10. It started out on the warmer side today, and now a few storms have worked their way into Siouxland. Tonight, we take a look through our Spencer cam. I'm joining Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Rhonda Mars in the Weather Center. What can we expect from these storms tonight, Ron? There have been numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, but only a couple one-inch diameter hail reports so far, which is the minimum level for mm -hmm. a severe storm. As of right now, the severe thunderstorm warning that has been in effect until 10 p.m. has just gone ahead, and uh, the National Weather Service is going to let that expire. So, yes, it's still a strong cell. As of right now, not considered severe. And here is Storm Track 4, showing not just these two big cells, but also a little uh, redevelopment taking place farther off to the west. But this is the area that we've been most concerned about from just to the west of Yankton to Crofton. I'm sure you're getting a good downpour with maybe some pea-sized tail anywhere through here. Wausau looks like you have a good thunderstorm going on at this time as well. And with this activity moving to the east at 40 miles per hour, Crofton, uh, or Hardington rather, will be to you by about 10.08. Why not around 10.16 and into Vermilion then by 10.37. And that severe thunderstorm watch has certainly gotten a lot smaller. It is still in effect though for places like Knox and Antelope Pierce as well as Cedar Counties. And that goes officially until 1 a.m. So as these cells move to the east, they should start to lose some of their punch. I'll have more about that and the heat that lies ahead for tomorrow. It's going to be hot coming up later on. It sure is. Thank you, Ron. An injured cell phone tower worker was stuck 160 feet up in the air tonight. Sioux City Fire Rescue was called to the scene along Florence Avenue in Riverside earlier this evening to help that injured worker who could be seen on the tower waiting for crews to arrive. First responders say the call came in from the worker's site manager. Sioux City's tactical rescue team used a process called a high angle rope rescue to get the victim down. Crews train for this all the time as part of our technical rescue team. It's just one of our many disciplines that they train very hard for. Today they were able to put them that training to use and effect a, a, a rescue. The worker was taken to a local hospital. Firefighters did not know what caused his injury or about his current condition. Some relief may finally be coming to the grocery aisles as inflation continues to wreak havoc on our wallets. Items like cooking oil, coffee, and avocados are starting to drop in price. Linda Baccaro has more. There's plenty of frustration with food costs, including the price of a summertime staple, watermelon. $9.99, it's crazy. We used to buy for $4.99. Just shop, I spend under $15. I buy nothing. But some relief may be in sight. Today, Ukrainian President Zelensky was on hand as the first ship carrying grain under a UN broker deal left Odessa. It had been stranded there since February with the Russian invasion. We've never been in a more volatile marketplace in food and agriculture than today. Alicia Abendroth is with Tridge, which analyzes global food and agriculture markets. Their charts show the wholesale price of wheat at 27 cents a year ago. After peaking in April, prices have dropped a bit. And there's an interesting trend with so-called luxury items like coffee and avocados. Both are down from a year ago because of decreased demand. As soon as the uh, economy starts to tighten up, consumers tend to, tend to start rolling back on their coffee consumption, their avocado consumption, things that are considered luxury products. We're hearing that maybe like avocados, for example, may be coming down. That would be good news because they're so expensive now. And in this tight economy, Avendroth says retailers aren't absorbing all the market fluctuations. So her advice? Exactly. Shop smart, really pay attention to price. It could be really different one week to the next. That's Linda Becerra reporting. Economic worries sent oil prices tumbling today. U.S. crude dropped nearly 5% to just below $94 a barrel. One lead oil analyst says oil markets are skittish ahead of Wednesday's OPEC meeting. The group will debate whether to heed a call from the White House to ramp up production. The good news is the prices at the pump continue to drop. 
According to AAA, the national average for regular gasoline slipped to 421 a gallon today. It marks the 48th day in a row gas prices declined. Experts predict they will continue to drop to $4 a gallon by Labor Day. Retailers are offering more discounts as Americans deal with high inflation. Companies like Walmart, Best Buy, Gap, Target, and Bath and Body Works are hoping to entice shoppers to make space on their shelves. Stores stocked up on merchandise earlier this year, expecting robust consumer demand amid supply chain shortages. But rising inflation is forcing many shoppers to curtail their discretionary spending. Stores say they are increasing promotions and lowering prices. Consumers may see more deals on several goods, including clothing, electronics, furniture, home goods, and bath items. In spite of the rising cost of materials and labor shortages, a growing number of people are updating their homes to adapt to remote work or school or because they can't afford the cost of a new home. But experts say not all upgrades have the same return on investment. Melissa Rainey brings us a closer look at the projects with the biggest payoff. With home prices soaring, a growing number of homeowners are choosing to upgrade their homes, but experts say not all renovations have the same payoff. When the market is getting hotter, when people's homes are becoming worth more money, they see investing more money into the home as a solid choice. If you want the best return on investment on your next home remodel project, ditch the idea of a spa-like bathroom or magazine-worthy kitchen. A recent report from the National Association of Realtors and the National Association of the Remodeling Industry says interior projects that recoup the most money are refinishing existing hardwood floors or installing new ones. The estimated cost of new hardwoods is around $5,000, but with a $6,500 return on investment, 118% of your cost is recovered. Change flooring from carpet into hardwood or LVP, you are much less likely to run yourself into big problems that can drain your budget. Another project with high ROI, an insulation upgrade, with 100% of the cost expected to be recovered. For comparison, the cost of adding a new primary bedroom suite is estimated at $182,000, with only about $100,000 of that cost recovered. One big mistake that inexperienced homeowners or investors make when they're doing a renovation is they go too grandiose. It is very common when you start moving walls to find electrical issues that need to be brought up to code, plumbing leaks that you didn't know existed. When it comes to the outside of your house, replacing the roof and the garage doors have the best return on investment, with both recouping all their costs. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Melissa Rainey. Experts say inflation plus material and labor shortages have raised the overall cost of any renovation, small or large. In 2020, Americans spent $420 billion on remodeling their homes, according to a Harvard University study. Scammers are taking advantage of the increase in flight cancellations with new cons. The Better Business Bureau says scammers are creating fake websites for cheap flights with a major airline. Consumers book the flight either online or by calling a customer support number. But shortly after making the payment, the company calls saying there's been a sudden price increase or an extra charge needed to finalize the booking. It's something a legitimate company would never do. In a similar con, the original flight is real, but the cancellation notice is fake. The consumer gets an email or text claiming an upcoming flight was canceled and provides a phone number to rebook and get a new ticket for a fee. When following up with real airline support, consumers discover nothing was wrong with the original flight in the first place. Here are some tips to avoid travel scams. Double check flight details before calling support. Confirm the URL before entering personal and payment information. Be wary of third party websites. Some websites appear to offer a legitimate service but are only fronts for a scam. Make online purchases with your credit card since they can usually be disputed. If you've been a victim of an airline ticket or other travel scam, report your experience to bbb.org slash scam tracker. A top Al-Qaeda leader who was instrumental in the planning of the 9-11 terror attacks has been killed. 
Ayman al-Zawari was killed in a U.S. counterterrorism operation over the weekend in Afghanistan. A senior administration official says there were no civilian casualties in the operation that killed al-Zawari, who succeeded Osama bin Laden as the head of al-Qaeda in 2011. Emmy and Grammy award-winning comedy actress Pat Carroll has died. She is best known for voicing the Disney villain Ursula in the animated film The Little Mermaid. She even got the opportunity to reprise the role in several Little Mermaid sequels, spin-offs, and even some theme park rides. The comedic television mainstay also won an Emmy in 1957 for appearing on the sketch series Caesar's Hour. Her daughter says she died at her home in Cape Cod, Massachusetts on Saturday. Carol was 95 years old. A ceremony in North Sioux City today honored veterans in a special way, unlike the way they were treated in the past. South Dakota Congressman Dusty Johnson awarded challenge coins to the veterans who served during the Vietnam War. He says many of those service members received a poor welcome home. One veteran attending the event says he was told not to wear his uniform off base because anti-war sentiment was so high. So our captain, being the dedicated person he was, he said, we're going to send some of you guys to the parade. Okay. That sounded pretty cool, but once we got there, it wasn't so cool. The people were nasty. Another veteran, Ralph Webb, served in the U.S. Navy from 1971 to 1974. He had a low draft number and thought it was better to enlist in the branch of his choice. Webb thought the Navy would keep him on the ocean, but he ended up intercepting radio traffic after learning North Vietnamese. 20 of us that went to language school together. And out of those 20, we still all keep in touch with each other. And that's 50 years ago. Every summer or every winter, we get together and go someplace and vacation for a week together. All in all, Johnson awarded about a dozen challenge coins at Centennial Park. Congressman Johnson also discussed issues in the airline industry while in North Sioux City. He says he's noticed a recent bump in delays and cancellations. The issue hits especially close to Siouxland as Sioux City's only air provider, SkyWest Airlines, is seeking to reduce or eliminate its flights from the Sioux Gateway Airport. I probably do 120 legs of flying a year, and obviously that's not a ton of fun, but it's gotten a lot less fun in the last three months. Clearly, our, our aviation infrastructure is not as strong as it needs to be. Johnson says the airlines and other industries failed to leave a cushion to fall on in times of financial stress. Be careful what you pack in your carry-on. When we come back, we'll tell you the huge fine one passenger is being asked to pay. And while we're watching a couple of storms tonight, tomorrow the intense heat moves in. I'll have more about that in your forecast coming up.